Hello, I am Amanda B. Johnson. Thanks for joining me on Dash Detailed. Recently, Charles Hoskinson gave a presentation at Coinscrum. Now, Charles Hoskinson is well known as the co-founder of both Ethereum and BitShares, as well as founding the company Input Output, which offers research and development for the creation of new blockchains. Now, in his presentation, uh, Charles outlines a brief history of cryptocurrency. Have a listen. The first generation of cryptocurrencies was all about transactions and immutable ledgers, these types of things, digital scarcity. So the question was, could you build a decentralized currency? So, crypto 1.0, transactions of scarce digital units on an immutable ledger, or decentralized currency for short. And then all of a sudden people said, well, wait a minute, these transactions between Alice and Bob, they're really dumb. They just move value. Wouldn't it be so cool if we could attach instructions to them? You know, terms and conditions, say, if Alice mows my lawn, then I'm going to ship the money to her, but then and only then? Okay, well, that's a smart contract. And that's kind of the second generation. These are the things that Sergio Lerner and others started with, and eventually Vitalik Buterin kind of got right with Ethereum. Second generation, transactions with instructions attached to them, or smart contracts for short. All of a sudden, you start talking a little bit more seriously about the meta, i.e. the governance of the system. The third generation of blockchains is all about, can we make this process explicit? Instead of having it be implicit and be meta to the protocol, and be whoever has the loudest microphone or whoever has control of the code, can we create a system within the cryptocurrency, kind of like the Constitution of the United States has a system to amend the Constitution. Here, Charles has just described Dash's governance system as it's been functioning since August of 2015, with what's been dubbed its decision-making engine. Click the link on your screen now if you would like to learn more about how the decision-making engine works. And Charles then goes on to even further describe Dash's self-funding mechanism. Pretty uncannily. Listen up. That's kind of the third generation, the governance system. Now, closely related to this is this idea of a DAO. So what the heck does that have to do? Why do we care about DAOs? What's interesting about DAOs? It'd be really nice to build some sort of decentralized, inclusive process that also takes economics and incentives in play and is deliberate and deterministic. That would be really nice to have. Okay, also allocation of capital. Wouldn't it be cool if cryptocurrencies had their own treasuries? Like Bitcoin had its own development fund and it would be able to just open up its wallet and there was some balloting process and Blockstream could say, I want to be a core developer for Bitcoin and Bitcoin actually just sends Bitcoins to Blockstream to write new BIPs or implement BIPs or things like that. It's a pretty cool idea. I like the term Charles uses, treasury. Way better than self-funding or budget system. Treasury! That gets the point across very well. And in his hypothetical example of how, say, Blockstream employees might be paid from a hypothetical Bitcoin treasury, Charles is describing precisely the way people like Evan Duffield, Andy Freer, and a team of other developers have actually been paid in actual Dash since August of 2015. So, as Charles mentions Bitcoin as the prime example of a first-generation crypto, and he mentions Ethereum as a more or less prime example of a second generation, why is it that he doesn't give a reference or a footnote, not even so much as a hat tip, to Dash as even an aspiring 3.0 crypto? Perhaps the answer lies in this segment. The third generation of blockchains is actually making this process more explicit. It's all about aggregation of information. It's all about identifying the stakeholders, identifying conflicts of interest, and creating a systematic process for us to actually make decisions about what to implement, what BIP to choose, what BIP not to choose. And this has to be deliberate and slow. Deliberate and slow. Slow and deliberate. Perhaps, internet friends, that is why Charles was able to go through an entire presentation at points sounding like he was reading from the Dash white paper without once mentioning Dash. Because deliberate and slow things rarely get a lot of attention. They are not flashy, they are not catchy, and they certainly don't get written about in the New York Times or Huffington Post or Bloomberg. If the history of cryptocurrency is, as Charles has said, first currency, then smart contracts, and then governance and treasuries, well then Dash is just doing things entirely bass-ackwards, aren't they? 
while the decision-making engine and Dash's budget system, I mean treasury, is becoming a well-oiled machine, only now are they preparing for the push of a digital currency that your mother can use with the release of Evolution in late 2017. So if you would like to come try things out on the slow, deliberate, and backwards side of things, join us, I invite you. The dash underscore chat is the popular Slack channel. Uh, the invitation to that group is in the description section below. And then the subreddit is our dash pay. And finally, it's Dash Accepting Merchants time! And there are so many more than you thought, so many more than I thought. First, Ace Data Recovery Services, which is, hey, like it sounds, a data recovery service. And it's based in both Seattle and Vancouver. Next is Mac Daddy Max, based in North Carolina, which is a shop which sells pre-owned Apple computers. Next is Promotius, which is an advertising firm that specializes in logos, graphics, and branding. Next is Tuapoma, which is a multilingual international classifieds site. Also the Big Dreams Island Guesthouse in Klong Chau Ku Kut, Thailand. And fine original watercolors by Lee Gordon Seabock, and finally, a correction from two episodes ago, Campbell's Asphalt Ceiling is based in Delaware, not Virginia. All these places take Dash, and if you take Dash and your business has not yet had a free shout out on this show and you want one, just send amanda at dash.org an email and you'll get one. And also, if you would like to subscribe to this show, which is if you would like me to send you an email with this video in it each Wednesday, again, an email to amanda at dash.org with the word subscribe in the subject line. And I'll see you next Wednesday. If you haven't had curious people ask you about your interests yet, you likely will as cryptocurrency becomes more and more discussed on a global scale. With that said, here are four mistakes to avoid.